If my voice sounds really shaky in this video, I honestly couldn't tell you why, like, even as I'm talking now, I can sort of feel it. I, I don't know why, sorry guys. Hey guys, what's going on? I hope your day is going really well. Welcome back to another Friday Five, and I gotta say, this was a really tough list to put together, but hey, life is hard, am I right? I narrowed down my many years of car games, racing games, virtual experiences that center around the idea of controlling digital versions of automobiles, you know how it is, to my five favorite. As I'm sure is the case with most car guys, I've played a metric butt-ton of such games, and to narrow it down to a top five was very difficult since I love each of these games for different reasons. Just as a quick disclaimer, it's mostly to do with nostalgia and stuff like that, so a lot of the more recent titles probably won't be on here. These are mostly just based off of the positive memories I have associated with these games. So with that out of the way, here are my personal top five plus a boatload of honorable mentions. Number 5, our respectable 5th yet lowest spot goes to a relatively unknown yet kind of popular game called BeamNG Drive. Yeah, I know that's kind of confusing, but you know, whatever, 2020 is a confusing year, so I'm sure it can't be that much worse. This is actually the one I've played most recently. I have about 239 hours logged, and this is the game I kind of just hop onto when I feel a sudden need for speed. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to throw another game title in there to confuse you. Since it's actually the only game out of any that I will mention on this video that I have on PC. I exclusively played on console before, but I switched to PC since. Loading times, am I right? This game is particularly good for when you want to drive, but also want to just smash your car into a wall wall, or crash into things at ridiculous speeds, hit ramps going 180 and land in a bash of glory, and just witness car destruction that you can orchestrate yourself. It's honestly kind of poetic sometimes, and also very cathartic. If comically destroying cars isn't your thing, you can also take part in campaigns, scenarios, minigames, track running, all that jazz. This is also kind of an open program, so if you really know what you're doing, you can get super nitty gritty, like deep. Like, re real, real deep. Like, seriously, you could essentially learn basic programming with this game. Lots of mods from the community, too. Half of which are pretty broken, but, I mean, at least there are some. To be honest though, it isn't as fun per se as some other big name arcade type car games, so I'd be lying if I said I chose it for its captivating gameplay or anything. It's more of a simulator and just... Yeah, a fun way to crash cars. Number four, Granny's Chorizo 2. I don't remember a whole lot about this game, but I do remember what I felt like playing it. It's like when people think back to an event or meeting someone and they say they don't remember what was actually said to them, but they remember what the person or the atmosphere was like. You know, all I remember was the sound from the PS1 GT2 menus because for some reason, I was super confused by the menu navigation, so I'd be going in and out of menus a lot. This was a game I played when I was really young, Grr. and I remember it was a lot more challenging to me than the other card games I was playing at the time, so winning a race felt very rewarding. I remember distinctly that I used the Subaru Legacy and the Audi TT for about 95% of the time. I'm not too sure why, I guess that's just what I was into back then. Or, like I said before, I didn't know how to navigate the menus, so I just always had to pick the same car every time. But I do remember when I used the TT, I would always win the game, and that became my favorite car over time for a while. Even if it wasn't the actual best game, or delivered the experience that the game was supposed to by using different cars, I guess I just liked the feeling of winning. Uh, it's kind of like the F1 dilemma where if a team wins a championship, then the chances are they're probably going to dominate for either a short or long era. There are obviously exceptions, but generally a winning team will keep the streak going. Stop winning Mercedes. Let's go Ferrari. <laughs> Numero Troys. This one's for my childhood. Need for Speed Undercover for the DS Lite. Back in the day, I was hooked on this and also the Mushroom Men Rise of the Fungi, and Mini Ninjas, and Spyro, Year of the Dragon. Was it Year of the Dragon? I think it was. The one that you stick in the bottom. And also WALL-E. There's a WALL-E game that came out for DS. I love the movie. That was like my favorite movie back in the day. Still is one of my favorite movies. Dang, I'm gonna have to dust off the old DS after this and like play these games for nostalgia or something, aren't I? Anyway, back to the topic at hand. Need for Speed Undercover. Wowee, what a babe this game was. And no, I'm not just saying that because they had Maggie Q play the main character. Okay, just no. I'm not. Definitely no. What scene to watch out for? So many. I get tied up. <laughs> Nobody ever really gets to do that to me. Definitely not saying that. They had kind of some of the real cars that are in the game on set and I kind of really... I become like a car chick person now. I have to have cool cars like a dude. I don't want flowers. I want the car. 
<laughs> and I'm gonna get it. Definitely not. I won't spoil the story, but basically you're helping Maggie take down a crime ring or something. We suspect one of the local street racing crews may be involved with an international smuggling ring. You get to drive normal cars and police cars, chase and race the whole nine yards. Or should I say Scotland Yard? That doesn't make any sense. I remember playing this game fondly, chilling on the bottom bunk of our bunk bed, cashing dubs and catching grubs. Those were the days, for real. Our second podium place goes to arguably the actual best game on this list as far as objective experience goes, which is Forza Horizon 4. For me, it was a hard pick between FH2, FH3, and FH4, because I just love those games a lot, and for each of them, I have different positive memories associated with them. But if somebody were to break into my house and bust my door down and tell me that I could only have one to keep for the rest of time, I would probably have to say the most recent edition since it's better in basically every way. The graphics are better, the mechanics are better, the sound design and visuals are better. It's just a very well put together game in general. It has its flaws and shortcomings, but so does every game. There's a couple crucial cards that are missing from this game for whatever legal reasons, <laughs> Toyota, but I think I'd still take this one for just how good it is on a technical scale. Out of all the games in this video, this is probably the game I've actually played the least since I have a PC now and every game on this list except BeamNG is on a console or other device. Like I mentioned before, loading time, am I right? I just don't play on the Xbox One too much anymore since I'd have to connect it to my monitor every time and blah blah blah, so yeah, unfortunately it doesn't get too much love for me these days. I buy the game for my PC, but even though I'm Asian, I'm not a doctor, so I'm not really ready to part with my cash just yet. Plus, I don't have as much time to play anymore. Sad face. And also, yeah, like I said before, console loading times just make me want to launch myself into space. Forza Horizon 4 is an absolute unit of a game, a collection of cars any man would die for, and a gameplay experience nigh unmatched by any other. Here's some honorable mentions, and like I said before, there's a lot. First one, Need for Speed Most Wanted, the more recent one. One of the games I played a lot on the 360. I just had fun with it, but just couldn't find a spot on this list for it. Hot Wheels Turbo Racing. Hot Wheels Turbo Racing! Also part of my childhood, plus it was on the N64, and everyone loves the N64. <laughs> Flat Out Ultimate Carnage. A cause and an avenue of release for my younger years of anger. If you've ever played the Flat Out series, you know what the heck I'm talking about. This game could really tick me off, but it also was kind of a way to let out that anger. So, I don't know, it's a balance, I guess. Do I need a therapist? NASCAR 2000, the kind of game that many familial lovers play, and also the game that taught me that going the wrong way and causing crashes, virtually of course, is kind of fun in a twisted way. And our last honorable mention is Forza Horizon 4, the only Forza motorsport game I've played to date, and I remember it all the more because I never actually owned the game. Yeah, I, I just downloaded the demo for the 360 and played the same track over and over again. It also made me really appreciate the 458, one of the best naturally aspirated V8 cars to ever exist, ever. Here we are at my top pick, my number one, my one and only, Burnout Paradise. This was my dream in game form at the time. An arsenal of cars, an open, sunny coastline world, and an endless stream of rival racers to take down in style. The foundation of my passions today and my childhood, of course, was almost built around this game. This is probably among the top five things that make me who I am today, alongside things like trauma and rejection. If you don't know about this game, which is a disadvantage to you, by the way, it's basically need for speed, open world, but with more focus on crash physics, which weren't always extremely accurate, but, you know, for a male under the age of 15, this is the kind of thing that you'd find stashed under their bed. This just might be the game that I logged the most hours in of all time, regardless of whether it's a car game or not. I'm pretty sure I played this game the most. I kid you not, I would come home from school and I wouldn't even take two breaths before I hopped on Burnout Paradise, listening to DJ Atomica and his sick playlist that only consisted of like 20 songs. As much as I want to keep gushing about the game and high-key flex my probably world record of takedowns in a single run, I need to end this video today, so I won't. The game is basically what the title suggests, and it just doesn't get much better than that. Way hey hey, you've made it to the end of the video and usually the part where I get hungry and start wanting food. That's the end of my top 5, thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any car games that you love now or even back in the day, please drop it in the comments below because I love to know what other people think back to fondly. I hope that if you were bored and you watched this video, I 
somehow cured that boredom to a degree. I hope the rest of your day or week goes good. Thank you so much for watching again. And I will see you, hopefully, in the next video. Uh, yeah, I, I, that's the end. Like, comment, subscribe. I'm gonna go eat. Thank you for watching. Here's the outro.